So properties of gases are they compress easily because they're so far apart. They mix completely with other gases. They exert pressure on their surroundings and they take the shape of the container. They also take the volume of the container. When using temperature and gas law equations, we always want the temperature to be a positive value. So the temperature scale based on the lowest temperature possible or absolute zero is Kelvin. Absolute zero is defined as zero Kelvin. This is the temperature at which all motion would stop. To get to Kelvin, we just take Celsius and add 273. Notice there's no degree sign on Kelvin. So in these problems, you need to convert between Celsius and Kelvin. They gave us Celsius in the first problem. We just add 273. And get 106 Kelvin. I'm going to pause the video and try the other three on your own. Restart when you have an answer. You should have gotten negative 195 because Kelvin minus 273 will equal degree Celsius. Here we're converting Celsius to Kelvin, so you get 1373 Kelvin. And 321 minus 273 is 48 degrees Celsius. Make sure you put units on your answers. Pressure is defined as a force applied over a given area. It's measured using a device called a barometer. Some pressure conversions you're going to need to know is 1 atm or atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equal to 760 torr, which is equal to 101.3 kPa. So here we have a pressure of 1.55 atm and we're converting to kPa. To do so, you start with the given. Set up a dimensional analysis chart. So whatever unit is to your mass will go on the bottom. And what you're converting to goes on top. Looking at our conversions, one goes with atm and 101.3 goes with kPa. So I simply have to multiply to get my answer. But make sure that you check your sig figs. I start with three sig figs. So I have one, two, three. My final answer is 157 kPa. Let's look at one more. So we start with 1300 torr. Unit given goes on the bottom. And what I'm looking for goes on top. Seven sixty goes with millimeters of mercury. It also goes with tor. Therefore, those cancel, and we're left with what we started with for thirteen hundred. Go ahead and pause the video and try these next two on your own. For this bottom one, in order to compare them, you're going to have to get them in the same unit. First example, you should have gotten 1012.833 in the calculator. But again, we only want three significant figures. So this one is our last sig fig, which means all the numbers till the decimal turn into zeros. If you only put 101, that's not the same thing as 1,010. So you needed that placeholder zero. 
For the bottom one, you could have converted either of them. You could have converted ATM to KTA or KTA to ATM. I converted KTA to ATM. Now they're in the same unit, so I can compare. 1.45 is much larger than 0.148, therefore it has the larger pressure. Standard temperature and pressure is 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. So standard temperature is 0 degrees or, remember you add 273 to get Kelvin, so 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is any of our pressure conversions that we just talked about. So when you see the letters STP, it's giving you a temperature and it's giving you a pressure. Kinetic molecular theory has four parts. It says that the volume of individual gas particles can be assumed to be zero. Gas particles volume aren't really zero, so this one isn't true, but it makes solving problems much easier. And the volume is very tiny, so we still assume the volume to be zero, even though it's not really. It's just very small in comparison to the container. The second thing in kinetic molecular theory, or KMT, it says the particles are in constant motion, and their collisions with the walls of the container are what cause pressure. That is true. The particles of a gas never stop. They're always in motion. The only time they could stop is at absolute zero. Number three says the particles are not attracted or repelled by each other. And when they collide, their collisions are perfectly elastic, meaning all kinetic energy is transferred without loss from one particle to another. But again, this one's not completely true because when the gas particles get close enough, sometimes there is some attractions and repulsions, but generally they're too far apart to have those. So the attractions and repulsions are very minimum but there are some attractions and repulsions that do occur. And the last thing, which is super important, is the average kinetic energy of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. In other words, if you increase the temperature, you have a greater kinetic energy or energy of motion. They're going to be moving with more energy. Real gases, though, again, behave more like an ideal gas under low pressure and high volume and a high temperature. At a low pressure, we have a larger container size. So the volume of individual gas particles are going to matter less in the bigger container. Therefore, kinetic molecular theory is more true in a larger container. So high volume means it's behaving like an ideal gas. And at high temperatures, particles are moving very rapidly. Therefore, the effects of attractions or repulsions are not very important because they're going to be minimized. So again, at high volume and high temperature, Gases are most ideal because they follow the kinetic molecular theory more. So if the volume, temperature, and pressure are all the same, then we look at the gases themselves to see who is following the kinetic theory or is more ideal. The smaller the gas particle and the smaller the IMF, the more ideal the gas will be. For example, both of these have LDF due to them both being nonpolar. So we're looking for the smaller gas particle. Neon would be more ideal. H2S is polar, so it's dipole dipole, and ammonia.
is hydrogen bonds. We want the smaller IMF, so that one is more ideal. So pause the video and figure out which is most ideal in each set. Remember only if the volume, pressure, and temperature are the same will you look at the gases themselves. Otherwise, you want the higher volume and higher temperature. Restart when you have an answer. For A, they're not at the same volume, temperature, and pressure, so we want the bigger volume and the higher temperature. This one has the higher temperature, so it's more ideal. For our next example, again, they're not at the same temperature, pressure, or volume. Remember from the other slide, it said that the higher the volume, or low pressure. Therefore, our temperatures are the same. This one has the lower pressure, though. And for the last one, they're at the same temperature and pressure. We want the lower IMF. Graham's law says that gases have different molar masses, therefore they travel at different speeds. Lighter molecules travel faster than heavy molecules at the same temperature. To figure out which one's lighter or heavier, you're going to just find the molar masses. Remember, though, the kinetic energy of all gases is the same at the same temperature. In order to change kinetic energy, you have to change the temperature. Diffusion is the rate at which particles will cross a room. So if I spray perfume on one side of the room, the time it takes to get across the room is diffusion, while a fusion is the rate at which a gas will pass through an opening. So at 50 degrees Celsius, which molecule travels faster, argon or krypton? Again, to just figure out who travels faster, we want the smaller molar mass. Argon is around 40, and Krypton is around 84. So since we're looking for the one that has the smaller molar mass, Argon travels faster. I'm going to pause the video and try the next two on your own. Restart when you have an answer. So this one was much closer. This one is 62, and this one's 64. So they travel almost at the same rate, but NO3, whoops, we want slower, so SO2 is slightly slower. And at this problem, they want to know who has the greater kinetic energy. They're both at 30 degrees. So neither. It'll be the same because they're both at the same temperature. 